Well, hey, everybody, Ben Carr, the campus pastor here at a Yorktown campus, and I have my good friend, partner in ministry, Eddie Anthony, hey. Waysburg campus pastor, and a lot of other things he does here at WEC. But um, hey, listen, we need you just to buckle up and uh, mm. get ready for an incredible, incredible time with some CPs today, because we're getting ready to challenge you, but also challenge each other in a, in a very important um, mission that God has called all of us on, and that is the mission of getting out there and getting to know people by investing in those relationships that we know in our circle of influence that can start in our home or investing in those people that we work with in our neighborhood and, and, and inviting them. We may even have another word for you today that we may say is besides inviting. And so what we want to do today as you buckle up, put that seatbelt on for the next few minutes is, is we're going to share some scripture with you guys just about what does it mean to be an example, to be a testimony, to be a witness um, for, for the name for the name of Jesus. And so today I've asked Eddie and I, I've asked myself to come in here with the passage of scripture to share with you all yep. about what does it mean? What does this all mean for you and I just in a kind of going, coming out of a post pandemic world, we're still kind of in it, but um, there's some things that we can do kind of as some next steps. So Eddie, yep. um, first of all, just what are some things that you have to share with us today about this, this whole meaning of influence, yep. sharing, you know, inviting that kind of sure. thing. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about uh, John chapter one. Yeah. Um, that's all, uh, that's a lot about, and the beginning is about uh, the apostle Andrew. And Andrew is actually known as someone who brought people into the presence yeah. of Jesus. And really what we, where we see in John one is that he's an apostle of John the Baptist yep. to start with. Yep. And then John the Baptist sees Jesus walking by and says, that's the Messiah, that's him. And Andrew's like, well, I got to check this out. So he goes and spends um, some time with Jesus. Then yeah. immediately he goes to find his brother, Simon, and brings Simon into the presence of Jesus. Yep. And immediately what we see, you may already know this, but the, immediately what we see is that Jesus changes Simon's name from Simon to yep. Cephas, which, which means Peter. Yep. Peter, which also means uh, rock, right? Yep. And so now we have the apostle Peter, right? On this, uh, Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church, talking yeah. about Peter. And so yeah. here we have Andrew yeah. saying, bring, bring Peter into the mm. presence of Jesus and just the power of that. There's also a couple other opportunities we see where Andrew was, was bringing people into the presence mm. of Jesus. One is where he was just bringing children yeah. uh, into the presence of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's a yeah. great, great thing. And then yeah. the other one is, is uh, where, where Andrew brings a little boy with his loaves and yep. fish into yep. the presence of Jesus. And then yep. Jesus turns around Just, and makes the, the, yeah. the miracle ready of, of feeding the 5,000 people. So Andrew, as a bringer of people to the presence of Jesus. That's so good. I like that word. We said that we're going to be yeah. a word today. Other bring, than, bring, other bring. than invest and bite. I mean, you got to get to know people, but bring them suckers, yeah. man. Bring them into the presence of bring Jesus. Them and bring them suckers in. Let's go. I mean, that's how I got to look at it. Like, I think for you to listen to you talk, I can just hear how passionate um, mm -hmm. that text is for you. And, um, so use that word bring, yep. um, just from a personal standpoint, just as a dad, a pastor, yep. friend, any, any of those roles that we all have, or you and I have, um, like, do you sense anything that God's doing as far as that whole yep. bring? No um, doubt. No doubt. So, uh, this, this, the dad aspect of that yeah. is really, really hits home to me right now. I have a, a seven week old, brand new baby uh, girl. And, uh, this past Sunday, I got to bring her into the presence of Jesus. It was her first yeah. time. Now she's six weeks old or older. Uh, she can go into our kids' environment. So this past week, I was able to bring her into the presence of Jesus just by inviting her really I didn't invite her. I just put her in there yeah, yeah. and uh, into the presence of Jesus. And if you're a parent, man, that, that is yeah. your number one calling, right? Is yeah. your family. Is yeah. your family. So. That's so good. You know, you think about those of you watching today, we, we talk about inviting. We talk mm -hmm. about telling people about WEC. Yep. It starts in your family. Yep. And I think a lot of you out there watching today, you've probably been praying for, you know, your spouse, your children, maybe yeah. a good coworker that has been mm -hmm. good to you but you're trying to like hey get them to come to church with you yep. maybe bring i like the word bring be a bringer yeah. is really really powerful um well today just from my perspective um from a biblical perspective i there's a passage of scripture you all um in book of acts chapter one where you know christ has has risen and um, he's getting ready to at the mount of Olives, basically to ascend into heaven i mean he's getting ready to yep. leave the people that he was with yep. for i mean until he comes back. Yeah. And um, we don't know when that's going to happen, yeah. hopefully soon. But um, in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, as, as Jesus is having the conversation with the people that he's closest to, yeah. you know, he's talking to them saying, hey, I'm getting ready to, to leave. Yeah. I'm getting ready to depart, but 
um, here's one thing you got to know as he's gathering these people together. These are people that like all kinds of walks of life, all kinds of influencers, all kinds of crazy stuff happening in the world mm -hmm. back then. Right. It's not happening now. Like it's almost like the whole stuff that's happening in the book of Acts chapter one, just with all things politically, all things religiously, just so much stuff. It's like, no, actually who can relate to that kind of now too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is in Acts chapter one, verses six and seven, it's, it's the disciples and them gathering together with Jesus. And as Jesus ascends, you know, the same Jesus is going to come back for us. And I think for, for all of us out there, as, as Christ ascends into heaven, the disciples are now having to gather around and figure out, okay, what's going to happen here? Well, Jesus says, hey, you're going to receive power and the Holy Spirit's going to come on you. So you don't have to go anywhere to buy it. You don't have to, um, you don't have to go on amazon.com, get the prime delivery. It's, it's the power is immediate. Yep. And so for all of you watching today, this is where I wanted you to really buckle up buttercups and basically say, hey, listen, I guess that makes sense. Um, it works. Does it work? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, buckle up because it's time for us to depend on the power mm. of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. And yep. the Bible says in Acts 1.8, be a witness not only in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, but the uttermost parts of, of wow. the world. So we're, we're called to be witnesses all over. Yep. And um, But for those of you watching today, who, if you believe that Christ has changed your life and the Holy Spirit's inside of you, you have that power to go and be a witness to go and be an inviter, to go and be a bringer, be a bringer to people in the presence, in the presence of God. So speaking of, of bringing, um, Eddie, is there a, is there a story that, yeah. um, that you had? Yeah, definitely. So this story came, is coming from years, years and years ago, actually, but it's super close to my heart. And you'll see that just in a second. Well, um, this, this one person was continually invited by, by her sister, by, uh, by her close sister and, um, just constantly, constantly kind of every Sunday morning would come, Hey, come, come with us to church, right? Come yeah. with my husband, my a couple kids to church, come, come with us. Yeah. And every Sunday morning she'd roll under the covers and say, nah, or just ignore, right? Just ignore the text. I, I ain't going to church. Right. Yeah. And, um, finally one Sunday came and after invite, after invite, after invite, she said, fine, fine, just get off my back. Stop asking me. I'll come. Well, like if I come, will you stop asking me? <laughs> yeah. Right. Just one time. I'll keep, keep doing it. Keep asking. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So she comes, comes to church and uh, ends up just bawling her eyes out the entire time. As Pastor Stu talked about the Lamb of God, she'd grown yeah. up Catholic even and, and heard that constantly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but then heard Pastor Stu talk about that in, in very real relevant terms. Mm -hmm. And uh, through, oh, through over the years, started volunteering and getting baptized and, and, and obviously saved before that, getting baptized and mm -hmm. uh, joining staff. And on her first day at staff, she met me. Oh, nice. Well, I mean, that's got to see where this is going. I see where this is at. See where it's going. So on her first day, she met me. And two years later to the date, uh, we were married. And yeah. so this is actually my wife, Molly's uh, invite story, how she came to church um, so many years. Holy cow, ago. man. That's yeah. awesome. Now look um, what happens. No. I mean, now look what happens. Three kids. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's great. I mean, we've been talking a little bit about whether it's a first time guest coming yeah. of being an inviter and bringer. Yeah. But there's also other people out there you may not know. There are people out there that... Uh, maybe used to attend WEC mm. and 20, before the COVID hit in you know, March of 2020 that you know of, yeah. and um, they're, they're yet to come back. They haven't, they haven't, they're not really going anywhere. Maybe at times they may be engaging online, which is great, yeah. but maybe they haven't come back. And um, so we had a couple weeks ago, we actually had a family over to our house and um, we actually talked to them a lot about why they haven't come back yet. Mm. Lots of different reasons as people have yeah. all kinds of different reasons. And um, I just listened and I just challenged him and said, you need to get back to church. I mean, I, I just flat out said, there's no more excuses. Like yeah. it's time for you to get engaged and start gathering with us again, whether it be, I mean, they were not aligned, nothing. Wow. And uh, so I called them out and I said, it's time for you to get back to church. Yeah. Like it's time. I mean, they have teenagers and they kind of were very, very quiet. And then yeah. they said, you know what? You're right. We need to. And they came that Sunday. Wow. Family of four came back. Awesome. So the people we're talking about can be a, a wide variety of people oh, yeah. um, out there. And so I want to encourage you, you all to take advantage of who God is placing in your life. And it could be the person next to you in your home, or it could be the person you're working with or people you used to volunteer with. Um, whoever that is, um, the power is in you. The Holy Spirit's in you to do that work. It's not you doing it. Rely on the Holy Spirit to give you power and you can be a witness, not only here, but around the world. Yeah. And um, this happens with online too. Like, those of you watching all around the world, you can do this by simply sharing the, the, the experience with other people. You can, you can communicate them via chat and say, hey, 
We'd love to invite you to come with us online at WEC and our service times, of course, on Sundays and Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yep. You were without excuse. Like, yep. we got to be obedient. Yep. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So, Ooh. ouch. One more time. Give it to us one more time. It was good. <laughs> Delayed obedience is disobedience. Okay. So I'm calling you to obey, just okay. like we're calling each other out. Okay. Uh, we got to obey. And uh, many of you, just as we kind of wrap up today, you're probably wondering, you know, what, what's changing? Well, a lot of things are changing. Um, just this week, our governor has has released um, some some restrictions from COVID that things are getting better. And it's actually an update this week that um, I believe starting this coming Sunday um, that, you know, our campuses, of course, at Water's Edge, um, this is from the governor, said, Hey, you know what? People can come in, of course, without that have been vaccinated without a mask, but also all social distancing has been has been relinquished. Um, so all the roads are going to wow. be opened up. Wow! All the Let's roads go. are opened up. No more stickers. Let's go. No more pre-registrations with kids. No more temperature Come checks. On. No more signage about what's going on. I mean, it's going to be lit up, and we're asking you to go and light up the world with wow. the gospel of Jesus and invite because y'all we're without excuse. Like it's time for us wow. to gather together, and uh, wherever you're at around the world, or maybe you're right down the road. God is calling you and I to be a witness and to have power from the Holy Spirit to do it. So that's our challenge for you today is to, yep. to go, 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 because people are waiting for you to come to them and to bring them yep. to the presence, to the that's presence good. of Jesus. So good. That's good. Well, Eddie, anything last minute before we close out? That's it. Be a bringer. Be an Andrew. Be a bringer. Be a bringer. Bring people into the presence of Jesus. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Hey, you guys have a great rest of your day, and uh, we hope to see you uh, this weekend.